Yes, finally an excuse to spend the next 12 minutes fawning over my favorite street motorcycle, the Ducati Scrambler. We all know it is the superior and refined choice for squids who want the look and feel of a classic motorcycle, but in a modern package. XSR who? No way, man. The Scrambler line from Ducati has it all from an air-cooled engine to that hold your breath moment where you're not sure if it's gonna start. From top to bottom, 100% Ducati, and it just feels so good. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Welcome back to your one-stop shop for motorcycle memes, carefully curated into an easily digestible numerical list veiled with the occasional insightful point. I am your host, the supreme Ducatista, the bestest Biscotti boy himself, the secret triumph simp, clammy noob. You had to know that once we started doing these, you'd want a blank bike video. It was only a matter of time until I hijacked it for a week and resumed my not-so-subtle brainwashing campaign. One day, my young squidlet, you will see the error of your ways and trade that perfectly functional but characterless fire blade in for the patrician's choice Ducati Scrambler. I mean, there's so many to choose from, why wouldn't you? Though the desert sled is definitely the best, and if I do my job right today, there will be a small army of sled owners in the comments evangelizing and preaching the good word down below. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm probably the only person who owns a sled and dares take it off-road. I mean, my mechanic at the dealership has had me sit down multiple times and tell me if I keep bashing my bike up off-road, they were gonna take it away from me. Oh well, I'm gonna keep dropping it and it's gonna keep on running because it's just that good. But the question remains, how did we get here? Well, today let's take a look at the history of the Ducati Scrambler and all of its various iterations and see if we can't divine its purpose and place in our world. But before we do, you gotta get trimmed, my dude. I mean, when you're hopping off your scrambler at the beach, you don't wanna have a whole bunch of scraggly pube hairs dangling out of your mankini, and you already know that Manscaped makes the best tool for the job, the Lawnmower 3.0. There's no bush too tough for this little beast. The boys over at Manscaped will do you one better with their brand new Weed Whacker, the only nose hair trimmer endorsed by yours truly. It's probably a little bit of a niche market, but whatever. Just shove this little beauty up your nose and let it rip. In seconds, all of those unsightly nose hairs will be gone before we even had time to thank Rossi for delivering unto you the tools that keep you looking fine and aerodynamic. But just to be clear, do not shove the Lawnmower 3.0 up your nose or try to trim your pubes with the Weed Whacker. Neither would probably go too well. You can get your hands on the new Weed Whacker by clicking the link down below and using the code NOOB20 for 20% off of your whole order. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel and this video. Click that link, NOOB20, 20% off. You are welcome. Now, Ducati's an interesting company. They started out in 1926 making vacuum tubes and condensers, then a few years later, a line of single-cylinder motorized bicycles. As the years went on, they struggled to stay in business, going from family ownership to government ownership to Texas Pacific in for 10 years. Not really sure where that came from. And then Lamborghini now. All this to say is the company hasn't really had a singular driving vision, which means that they've made a lot of different kinds of bikes. They made V-twin sport bikes like the 750 Super Sport to big displacement cruisers like the Apollo 1260, which never saw the light of day. But what they were really good at was making single cylinder, small displacement around town kind of bikes. And these were the ones that we're interested in today. Similar to Triumph Bonneville's, the motorcycles featured big flat seats, round headlights, and wouldn't stand out in a crowd. But when people started to take their big heavy Harleys and Bonnies in the dirt, Ducati saw an opportunity. At the behest of the Berliner Motor Corporation, Ducati took their Diana 250 and gave it a total Total makeover. It received longer travel suspension, more power, and new frame, all designed for flat track and off-road racing. This was the first production Scrambler that was available to the public, with a street-legal version of the Scrambler 250 being available in 1962. These were referred to as the narrow case Scramblers due to the engine having been much narrower to fit inside the new frame. The 1962 Scrambler was powered by a 248cc air-cooled single, making 18 horsepower. So it wasn't the fastest thing in the world, and it was surprisingly heavy by today's off-roading standards at 304 pounds wet, but that's what you get when everything's made out of steel. In 1967, they bumped the displacement to 350. Specs on this one are real tough to find, but suffice it to say, it was a little bit faster. Then in 1968, they released a second series of wide case scramblers, once again matching the engine to a newly designed frame. They made engines from 125cc to 450s, with the Scrambler 450s being the most popular in the United States, where they were named the Jupiter. The Jupiter had a 435cc single cylinder engine pumping out 23 horsepower with a 5 speed transmission and a roaring top speed of 80 miles per hour. It weighed in at 293 pounds with a seat height of 30.3 inches. The last year of the Scrambler was in 1971 with the Desmo R slash T, which was the first scrambler to feature the classic Ducati Desmodromic valves, which prevented valve float. 
it was sold in the US for one year and one year only with only a few hundred ever imported. So if you want the last classic scrambler, you're basically hunting for a unicorn. It made 31 horsepower from its 436cc single and could go from 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. With its 286 pound weight wet, it could reach a top speed of 96 miles per hour. It was an awesome little bike, but then Ducati sent the scramble line off into the good night, never to be seen again. But then the hipster revolution and beard wax wars broke out and millennials took to the streets to see who could ride the most old school and eclectic motorcycles. CB750s and Bonnevilles alike fell victim to hack mechanics and backyard builders attempting to build the least comfortable motorcycle that they could. In this new era, this rebirth of street scrambler aesthetics, manufacturers scrambled to meet the new demand. You see what I did there? You can't hear it, but I am winking. Yamaha released their XSR line, Cowie resurrected the corpse of the Z1900 and transformed it into the Z900 RS, and Harley, well, they'd already been making retro bikes since the 60s, so they were ahead of the game there for once. But it was into this new crowded marketplace that Ducati unveiled their 2014 Scrambler at the Intermote International Show. Entering full production in 2015, Ducati built the new line of scramblers with an 803cc L-twin engine, yes, L-twin, that made about 75 horsepower and 48 foot-pounds of torque. In keeping with the old school scramblers of yesteryear, these new bikes had a big banana seat, round headlights, and retro paint schemes. If you ask me, this is one of the most true to its roots Neo retro bike. It's air-cooled, it doesn't have sophisticated computers keeping you from yeeting yourself into a tree, and while they're not specifically sold as off-road or flat-track bikes, you can totally take them into the wild. When they were first released the scramblers you could buy a whole bunch of different models. There was the classic, the Urban Enduro, the Icon, the Flat Track Pro, the Full Throttle, the Italia Independent, and the Little Baby 62 with a 399cc engine. Nowadays there's a few less of the 803cc scramblers available with the Urban Enduro being replaced with the Desert Sled and the Italia Independent getting the axe. However, you can get yourself a big boy version with a 1079cc engine in the form of the Scrambler 1100. This one's not really a pure Scrambler since it has a lot of extra technology baked in, and the Scrambler life is about having a pared down, back to basics riding experience. But here's the question, with so many versions of the Scrambler available, which one should you get? The correct answer is the Desert Sled. Moving on. No, just kidding, come on. While I do absolutely love my Desert Sled, I do understand that it's not the right motorcycle for everyone, and I would kindly ask those people to leave. Still just kidding. But seriously, which one should you buy? Well, if you're feeling like owning a piece of history, there's a bunch of those old school scramblers available. You just need to know where to look and be willing to deal with a lot of quirks from carbs to kickstarters and all kinds of weird electrical problems. There's a reason they were so popular back in the day, but on modern roadways, those old scramblers might not cut it. So I'd say grab yourself a modern one. And as for which one to get, that's really down to which one you like the most. Not unlike the Harley Sportster, they're all priced roughly the same with the cheapest being the 62 at 79.95 and with it only making 40 horsepower and 25 foot-pounds of torque, it's actually a perfect beginner bike. If you want to shell out a little extra for that fine Italian steed, but hey, you'd be able to flex on all your buddies with their Ninja 250s and R3s because you made the correct decision. Just don't forget about all the service charges because the sticker sock might just kill you. For the rest, expect to pay anywhere from ten dollars to $12,000. Unless you go with the 1100, you're going to get the same air-cooled 803cc power plant with a few key differences to set each model apart from the others. So let's say you decide to take the plunge into the scrambler life with a modern scrambler because, well, let's face it, no one's buying an old school one. What issues might you encounter with this bike? Well, there's been three main problems. The first is heat issue. Since these bikes are air-cooled, they have a hard time regulating their temperature. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do to solve this issue other than keeping the bike moving or to use lower octane gas. You might also be able to avoid some heat from the exhaust getting back to the engine by wrapping the headers. As a scrambler owner myself, I can say they do run hot even on 80 degree days. It can be pretty toasty if you don't keep it moving. Overheating can cause damage over time or just cause the bike to crater, but such is the life of a Ducatista. The second major issue has to do with the side stand sensor, which might not register the position of the side stand correctly. Common symptoms of the bike not starting or dying when you put it in gear, however, I have not seen reports of the side stand switch killing the bike while it's in motion. This is a pretty easy fix, either replacing the faulty switch or bypassing it altogether, which is a super common mod on bikes like the DRZ or other dual sports. 
Finally, there's an issue where the clutch is prone to wear early, meaning that the bike might be rendered impossible to ride. Common symptoms are the clutch slipping and top gear or extra noise coming from the clutch basket, but as we all know, Ducati clutches are far from silent. The only solution here is to rebuild the clutch, but it's a wear part so you're going to have to do it eventually anyways. All in all, the Scrambler is a pretty great bare bones motorcycling experience, and while I am a little bit biased, I do think that the Desert Sled serves its function as the most tried and true, true to its roots, Scrambler of the lineup. And if you'll allow me to wax poetic for a moment, the Desert Sled really is the one to get because it is actually really different. It features a completely different revised front end, off-road modes for riding, the frame has been extended and changed, the swing arm is different, it comes with different wheels, has a 19-inch front end. It's a truly awesome bike that will wheelie, happily trundle down off-road on some light off-roading trails, wouldn't want to chuck it down a single track, but it is a fantastic motorcycle. And that 803cc air-cooled two-valve of Ducati engine, it has tons of character. Whether you're a new rider just starting out, or you're a more experienced rider who's looking for an authentic experience, or you just want to goof around with a really fun motorcycle, the Ducati Scrambler lineup has something for everybody, and I am a little bit biased because I own one, but I do think it's a pretty awesome motorcycle. Just don't be upset whenever people call you a Ducatista and ask you where your biscotti and espresso are, because, well, I did start that meme, and so it does persist pretty heavily. Hey, you adorable little squid! Thanks for watching the video. Why don't you click on this one right here and keep watching? Don't worry, I'll wait. Just like this. Click the video. Do it now.